In this video, we're gonna cover the basics of stock footage, how to capture it, camera settings, and how to take the ordinary and make it extraordinary. <laughs> that sounded so much better in my head, sorry. <laughs> One thing you want to do is find natural frames. Find something that frames your subject, and that will just add a little bit more interest and depth to your video or picture. Look for elements in a composition like this tree here to anchor your image, and also this pathway that leads the view across the video. And even though I'm backlit, my silhouette in the shadow, this could be an interesting stock video, just a shadow walking through the frame. Another thing that's very important with stock video is logos. You can't have any logos. And honestly, I don't know how to Photoshop these out of a video. <laughs> so bring in plain clothes or something that's uh, indistinguishable is gonna help you a lot with your stock videos. So. There, that's a little better. No logos, nothing to see here. Okay, maybe wearing something black in a dark forest is not such a smart idea. I do have a jacket, <laughs> but it is hot. I know it's fall, but today is a very warm day and I'm hiking, so I'm a little bit warm. I'll put this on before we take the photo or the video. All right, so I found this spot that I think looks pretty good. I got some trees with some color changing and I'm gonna put my jacket on. Like I said before, it's a little warm. <laughs> and also be aware of your logos. Know where your logos are. This jacket has a logo focus. This jacket has a logo right here. So as long as I keep that over like that, it'll be fine. I brought a prop that, as you can see, my little camera has gone through a transformation. It doesn't say Canon anywhere anymore. So now I can use this to photograph the autumn landscape. But this one seems to be flapping. I wanted it to get depth, but not to get in the way. So they're a little better. Now I can the idea is that yes, I've sold pictures of leaves blowing in the wind, but having a camera and using yourself as a model, pretending like you're taking pictures of the woods and the color changing things, that's gonna be the little extra in the ordinary photos. I really gotta find better puns. But anyway, let me change it. Oh man, I just noticed that. Okay, hold on. That's terrible. Maybe if I put these like that okay that's not that's not terrible now what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna set the camera on 60 frames a second right now i'm filming at 24. 60 frames a second is going to allow me to slow it down so literally only two seconds is going to be four so if i can film three seconds of me over here pretending to take a photo of the leaves that's going to be enough to give me a stock video again no logos all right let's switch the camera One more thing I forgot, the microphone. I almost dropped the camera. I always forget I have the microphone. When I'm doing anything for thumbnails, you might notice that I always have a microphone. So I'm gonna remove this now and then remember to put it back on when I'm finding a new location. Find the spot to focus on and leave it there. Don't leave the autofocus tracking option on if you have one because that's gonna get your video rejected. Also, the simple act of walking through a frame picture like this just adds another element that wasn't here, which obviously it's me. The simple things like this, walking in nature, stopping and looking in the sun, I might be a little blown out, so let me go into the shade. Now, I'm not in focus when I get close because I focus on this tree so that this plane would be sharp where that's where the sun is. And here it's a little diffused, so I should be well exposed. But this video is at 24 frames a second because there's a lot of distance. The closer I get, the more I like to slow it down. So, and again, if I'm walking in slow mode, it'll look kind of weird. So let's go find something else where I can do it closer. Okay, now here I am focused on this tree 
where the interest is at because that's where the light's at. So I'm gonna hide the camera and probably should be at 60 frames a second, but I'm gonna leave it at 24. I'm just gonna come over here and look at the leaves, look at the moss. I think a close up of that will look good too with the shadow. But anyway, that's one stock clip. Now let's do the camera. I honestly don't know if that's gonna work or not because of the light and the shadow and how harsh it is with the with the sunshine, but I don't know, we'll see how it comes out. Okay, that's crunchy. <laughs> the idea is simple. You don't need a giant tree like this. You can do this anywhere in your backyard. You can, in, in a city where, well, be careful with the camera in a city, but anywhere where you have something of interest and you add another element like a tourist, a tourist with, this camera with their phone. Just be very careful with logos. Mine has my logo in the back, so I could always take that off. Here, taking a selfie. Whatever you can do, whatever tourists do, let me try to blind you there. Uh, the idea is to keep things interesting, adding a subject, adding another element is really gonna help you not only with your photography, but with your videography. Now, the other benefit I have with the cell phone and this camera, a modern camera, is that I can literally take a picture of me taking a picture. Using my phone to remote control the camera, I could change my settings, I could compose it and frame it, looking at what the camera is looking at. Because from here, I can barely see the screen. I don't even know if I'm in focus. But having the phone to connect to the camera is really gonna help you a lot. Uh, understanding your composition, where to move, where the light is, and whether your highlights are blown out or not. The whole point is to do simple things. Like I just did a couple things with my phone. I could see through my phone that I was connected. Stock photography is the same as stock videography. Keep it simple. You can see I'm framed to the trees. That's a natural frame. The lighting's on me. Just be careful not to over push your uh, dynamic range and just keep things simple. Everyday things like a phone, whether you're talking to someone on the phone, slow that down a little bit so it looks more, I guess, natural. I mean, we're not that emotive when we're saying hi to somebody. But the whole point is to be able to use that like you were that excited on a park bench. I mean, so many ideas that come from just using a phone or a camera. I hope this was interesting. I'm trying to give you the basics on stock footage, and then maybe I'll make another video for next week, how to edit stock footage the way I do it. <laughs> I'm not saying this is the best way, but it's what I've been doing for a few years now, and it seems to be working for me. So thank you very much for watching. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you guys when we get back in the sun in the next video. Bye. I do have a remote here. <laughs>